I've already been introduced. Uh, if you missed my name, Andrea Mohosia. Uh, most people know me as a lawyer, but I don't introduce myself as a lawyer. All right? But as an entrepreneur. I hope you're ready to take some notes. Right? Okay, so my topic says getting out of a cage life. Maybe I should write a bit. Getting out of Life. And I guess that uh, for you to understand my topic well enough, you would need to uh, have some kind of understanding of who I am and where I come from, etc. So here's my story in a nutshell. So I was born a lion. Yes, I was born a lion. But I woke up some day many years later only to find that I'd become a good seer. And I had a big family around me, friends around me, and many neighbors and relatives that I could count. And everybody was happy around me. And the reason that everybody was happy was because as gazelles, you know, we couldn't hustle much about anything. You know, as a gazelle, you don't need to hunt in order to eat, right? So, because grass grows everywhere. So food was literally everywhere we went. Uh, but little by little, it started downing on me that things were not intended to be the way they were. I began to realize that my life and that of my family was more of a choice than things. And that was the paradox. See, I have my family. I have my relatives, I have my friends, but on the other hand, I have this nagging feeling that I don't belong to this kind of life. If you've ever been in such a situation, you know what I'm talking about. And life seemed very simple by that time. You know, as a gazelle, what you're told is like, you know, wake up in the morning, eat some grass, drink water, <laughs> stay out of trouble, stay away from the lions and predators, right? And then eat some more grass when the sun goes down, go to sleep, and repeat that the next morning. That seemed a, a simple and straightforward life, right? Very simple, very straightforward. But to me, there was something wrong with that. I didn't necessarily want to live a simple, straightforward life that was not in alignment with what I felt in me. And to complicate matters a little bit, when I watched the predators, when I watched the lions of life, I could only admire their lifestyle. You know, the hunters and the hustlers of life, you know that, right? I could only admire their lifestyle. But then I was in a cage, and the cage began in the mind. My mind was in a cage. And so my body could not go anywhere I wanted to go if my mind was not in alignment with that. That was the problem. Um, but then I decided that I was not going to spend the rest of my life running away from challenges. You see, I realized life was miserable. Although it looked very simple and straightforward, but it was miserable. You know why? As a gazelle, every day there's death in the gazelle life. Right? Some gazelles being killed by a lion or predator. Every single day. Not in the lion's life. Lions don't mourn the death of their own every day. So, I was in this position, I was in this situation where I wanted to get out of a life that I thought was miserable, but then everyone around me was comfortable. Like death was normal for them. Like running away from lions and predators was normal for them. Running away from challenges, that is what I mean. Was numb. I was tired of running away from challenges. And I said, I'm not going to sit here and spend the rest of my life running away from challenges and not being able to help a family friend or um, maybe a friend or relative or family member that ran into a challenge. I couldn't help anybody. Well, I couldn't even help myself. So I said, no, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life being in this cage. And you know, sometimes it's like magic. Things started changing, and I could start facing my, my fears then, and then I could, you know, defy the odds one after the other. 
And all of a sudden, I started noticing something entirely different. The lions of life, the predators of life, they, they stopped chasing me. It's like I'd become one of their own. They started coaching me and guiding me and mentoring me on how to hunt, how to hustle, and how to live a life of no regrets. And my gazelle family, well, first they ignored me. You know, they always ignore you first. But then they started hating on me. Why? Because everything they once knew about me had changed. The way I walked, you know, where I went, what I ate, the time I slept and woke up, everything had literally changed. And for them, they had nothing they could love about me. There was nothing they could even slightly like about me. Uh, little by little, I started being alienated from my family and from my friends and from my relatives and from my neighbors. It's a lonely life. It's a lonely feeling. If you ever want to get out, out of a kid's life, you have to know it's a lonely life. You'll have to go through that lonely feeling for some time. But I was ready for that. So I alienated myself from them and I became totally different from them. And when I appeared, First, they just hid themselves from me, and then later they started running away from me. Because to them, and indeed to me, I had completely become a liar. But what I never realized was that all this time, I had been a liar all my life. But I had never discovered it because I had chosen to live the life of a Garcia. That's my story in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't understand it, catch me later. I'll explain more. So what you see right here in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, is one big hungry life. Now, back to you. Because this, all this is not about me, but about you. So I have got a question for you. How many of you would like to live a bad life? Raise your hand, please. You are here and you want to live a bad, miserable, low, sad life. Put your hands in the air. Are you serious? You don't want any misery? A little bit of misery? Anyone? You want to live a bad life, sad life, miserable life, unfulfilled life? No hands raised, right? But I tell you what, 90% of the people in this room actually want to live a bad life. You say, how do I know that? <laughs> Check my time a little bit. I can tell by looking at three things. Number one, by looking at the actions that you take every day. Number two, by looking at the things that you tolerate every day. And number three, by looking at the things that you ignore every day. I hope you caught me well. So, let's begin with that. If I look at your actions, I can tell whether you want to live a bad life or not. It's not about what you tell me. You see, actions speak louder than what? Guys, actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. So we do agree here that if I look at the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, I can tell where you're headed. Number two, I said, <clears throat> the things that you tolerate. So let's look a little bit at this. If you can tolerate <coughs> gossip, Okay? And, and cheap talk. If you can tolerate mediocrity, if you can tolerate lack of ambition, if you can tolerate uh, laziness, if you can tolerate unnecessary interruptions, a 
and things of this kind. Where do you think you're headed? A good life or a miserable life? Okay. Then, number three. I said, I look at the things we ignore. Okay? The things we ignore. So, if you can ignore sound advice, where do you think you're headed? Misery. So I don't need you to tell me what, what kind of life you want to live. I look at your actions, I look at the things that you can put up with, the things that you can tolerate, and I look at the things that you ignore. How many people in here know that eating healthy and exercising regularly is good for health? Raise your hands, please. You know that eating healthy and exercising is something good. Raise your hand. It's a good number. How many people know that reading books and watching good videos is good and necessary for personal development? Raise your hand, please. Good. How many people know that, uh, let me give an, uh, an entirely different example now. It's the same, similar, same. So how many people know that uh, prayer is necessary for spiritual growth? Praying, raise your hand. People not raising their hands, you don't know that prayer is good. Okay, but how many people strive Okay, try to eat healthy, healthy every day, to exercise regularly, okay, to read a book every day, to pray every day. Raise your hands, please. Okay, fewer hands now. <laughs> right? So, if you can ignore personal development, for instance, because hands are fewer now than before. <laughs> If you can ignore personal development, reading a book, you know, watching nice videos about you know, motivational videos, inspirational videos, if you can ignore such kind of things, my friend, you're in the, in the wrong lane in the race for success. It doesn't matter what you say. All that matters is what you do. Okay? What you do, what you tolerate, and what you ignore. That can pretty much give you a picture of where you're headed right now. So you don't need me to come and tell you where your life is headed. You need to take an audit of yourself. The things that you do, the things that you tolerate, and the things that you ignore. So, if you look at these things, you can tell where your life is right now and where your life is headed in the next five years, in the next three years, five years, 10 years, and to the end of your life. So my topic says, getting out of a cake life, okay? Gave you my story and I gave you uh, why I think most people are headed for um, disaster. But then I would like you to know what to do in order for you to get out of any kind of cage in your life. Okay? Okay, there are about four things that you can do to get out, to get yourself out of a cage, okay, out of a cage life. Number one is get out of your life. Now, how can I get out of my life, you must be asking. Of your life and watch it. From a distance. Okay? Get out of your life and watch it from a distance. You see, we live very busy, frantic, and frenetic lives. Very busy. We're so busy. We're so frenetic. And if you're not careful, you will never ever get a chance to step out of your life and watch it objectively to see whether you are headed in the right direction or not. You see, most people are living life just the way it is, just the way things come. They, they never get a chance to step out of their lives and watch it from a distance. You see, my mentor said, you need to look at your life um, like a movie. Replay your life. And look at all the scenes and decide, is there anything that you don't like in your life right now? 
Is there anything that you think you, you should change right now? That's up to you. It's not up to your next door neighbor. It's not up to your mother. It's not up to your, to your friend. It's not up to me. It's up to you. So you have to get out of your life and watch it from a distance. Like you draw the curtain and watch Miko Chen from a distance and start to try to see the houses and you know the environment. And also you go this side, Simona Yamala, the environment of the houses. Do that to your life. If you don't do that, you will never know number two. And number two is one of the most important things. And what is that? Know who you are, not who you are. You see, you will never get out of the cage life if you don't know who you are. Now, knowing who you are means knowing your purpose, knowing your mission in, uh, on this planet. You see, my mentor said the other day that we are products of some kind of maker. He reminded us all that we are a product, we are like a PC, a computer, we are like a laptop. We are like a mobile phone, and there's some kind of instructions for us to follow on how to live. So, you have to understand your mission. You have to understand who, you have to know, sorry, not understand, understand is the third point. You have to know who you are. You have to know your mission. Why are you here? Are you here to motivate people? Are you here to teach people? Are you here to uplift people? Are you here to do business? You see, when you do it, when you do it, you do and I'm a living example of that. <laughs> you see, initially I didn't know who I was, why I was here. So I wanted to become a priest. Just become a priest. You know where I come from. You know, I come from a Catholic background. So I just wanted that, sorry. Um, that feeling, eh? I was, and, and the rest of the people say, you see, made me feel like power, right? I didn't know why. I didn't know that I was not built for that. But then I realized, um, I don't think I'll be a good priest. I don't think I can make it. So I wanted to be a lawyer, right? I want you to, to follow my story. I want you to follow these examples that I'm giving you, to see the importance of knowing who you are. You some more son. So I wanted to be a lawyer. So I went to um, you know, the university, uh, my mentor already said. And then I became a lawyer. And then I realized, oh, well, I think I, 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 think I was not made for this going to the courts and, you know, your honor, your honor. And, you know, there's some kind of things that happens in the, in the legal field that I didn't like. So I said, I think I was not made for this. So I wanted to become president. Can you imagine me being your president? Some people are saying, you're new here. <laughs> Friend of mine. <laughs> okay? So I wanted to become president. And then I realized, uh, well, I think politics is not for me. So I wanted to become some kind of point. Can you imagine that? That mix up of things. So I'll become some kind of poet and writer, write some poems, you know, Mashaidi too. And then I realized that uh, that was not for me. I'm not here to be a poet. And then I said, I think I should be a traveler, just traveling the world, just a traveler. Can you imagine? From being a priest, lawyer, president, poet, then traveler. And then I realized, oh, well, I think I don't have the money and the time to do that now, so um, I think I should just get married, right? So I'll figure things out later for myself. Then I got married, right? <laughs> but then I took, I took an objective look of my life. I stepped out of my life and asked myself, why did, I, why, why did I want to become a priest? Why did I want to become a lawyer? Why did I want to become president? Why did I want to become, and why haven't I become all those things? Why am I not doing those things? Why am I not headed there? And then I looked at my life and I said, okay, there are some talents and abilities in me that I think um, are not in alignment with the things that I wanted to be before. That's when I realized who I was. So right now I know who I am. And I know what I'm doing. And I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. So that's number two. Okay, me tell a story kidogo so that you can understand that. Number three, understand your mission. Understand your mission. 
So num number two is know who you are. That means know your mission, know your purpose. Why are you here? Number two, number three, understand your mission. Now, understanding something is entirely different from knowing something. You see, you could know that I don't have money. You could have that knowledge right now, that I don't have money or I don't have food. But understanding that is a little bit tricky. You need to be in my position. You need to step into my shoes to understand, okay, the situation that I'm in. So for you to understand your mission, you need to step into the shoes of your creator, the one who gave you that mission. What was his idea of how you should accomplish that mission? Then you would understand your mission, okay? And number four, because I'm not the only speaker here, okay? Number four is honor your mission. Honor your mission. Honor your mission. Now, before I go to this, before I jump to this quickly, I should like to, I would like to say, when you understand your mission, once you understand your mission, everything, pretty much about everything you do, everything you tolerate, and everything that you ignore will change. I'm telling you, not only will those things change, even your relatives will change. <laughs> your friends will change. Even your mother will change. Trust me. Now, honor your mission. Now, this is the arena of lions, not gazelles. Because if you're going to honor your mission, if you're going to honor your life purpose, you are going to alienate yourself from everybody else you know. That could hinder you and your journey. Now, I'll give you an example from one of the mentors that I, I, I follow every day, okay? His name is Jesus. You see, there was a day he was teaching, not like me, but a bit like me. He was teaching people and he was telling them this and telling them that. And then all of a sudden, someone comes, okay, not you, but someone comes from the door and says, hey, excuse me, your mother and your brothers are outside. They want to see you. Can you imagine that? <laughs> what did Jesus say? Hey, you don't understand my mission. My mother and my brothers are these people. Are those who are listening to me. Are those who hear the word of God and do it. That's the arena of a lion. You don't say such things if you're not sure who you are. Mama knows how to lie. I'm not I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to Forget about being his mother. Mama and Abanya. So once you get out of uh, your life and watch it from a distance, and then you know who you are, and then you understand your mission, and then you, you are ready to honor your mission. Up on the Baba and I say, I think you should get you should get a job. Mambia Baba, I think no. I don't need to get a job. Why? I say, no, it's not about Kabure. But I don't think I'm made for that. I don't think I'm made for employment. I think I should get a business. Unajua kuna wazazi wengine anasema ah unajua mimi na mama yako tumefikiria tumeona tukufungulia biashara jamani unajua huyu mtu ni mfanya biashara tumeona tufungulie saluni they don't even understand who you are wewe mwenyewe ujielewe lagi you don't know who you are you don't understand your mission okay so ladies and gentlemen to get out of a cage life you need these things get out of your life and watch it from a distance know who you are Understand who you are, understand how being who you are is going to impact people, and then honor your mission. Now, if you allow me, Mr. Alphonse, uh, Mr. Alphonse, if you allow me one more minute, I would like to share something as I wind up. Thank you. Um, you are not going to get here if you're not ready to put on a fight. You see, most people, most people, even in here, they would rather die poor than start a business that could change their lives. 90%, I say, 90%. 90% of the people, even here, they would rather die like gazelles rather than collide with their mother about, I want to be alive, not a gazelle. You understand? Other people are even afraid of their next door neighbor. What their next door neighbor would think, what my former classmates would think. Can you imagine? Now, there's a guy called Cloud McKay. Cloud McKay. Name ring the bell? This guy's a poet. I think he's the one who, wanted, who made me want to become a poet as well. Cloud McKay wrote a poem. One of the poems, I'm finishing with this, okay? It says, if we must die. How many people know that poem? Okay, two people? Wow. If we must die. 
I'm sorry, I'm going to reproduce these uh, first two stanzas, and I think they'll help you. Okay, the poem says, if we must die. Okay, so I say, if we must die, let it not be like hawks. Okay, if we must die, let it not be like hawks. Hunted and penned. Penned means cornered. In an inglorious spot. Okay? While round us back the mud and hungry dogs making making the mock at our accursed lot. Okay? And the second stanza says, you're going to look for this in the internet, you see it. And the second stanza says, um, if we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in pain. Then even the monsters with fire shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. Why am I reproducing this point? Because all I want you to do right now, you might not be in that lion mode, ready. You might, try, you might be trying to figure out what to do with your life, but at least, I beg you, don't die like a hog. Okay? Hogs, ninguruwe pori. Sorry for Muslims. Okay? Hogs, don't die like a hog. My friend, don't die like a gazelle. Don't die unfulfilled. Don't die with your mission undone. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to me. And God bless you.